Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com and I'm bank fishing in downtown DC and I'm going to show you more tips and tricks for catching catfish from the bank. So this is this is for you bank fishermen out there. There are some awesome fish that can be had even if you don't have a boat, even if you don't have fancy gear. Alright, I'm going to show you a really typical weekday trip. I'm a lawyer and I go to court almost every morning and this Tuesday morning I didn't have any trial scheduled. So I got up extra early and I decided I was going to go fishing for an hour or two before heading off to work. So in this type of situation, it's all about getting in, getting your fish, and getting out of there as quick as possible. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to stay mobile, to hit a lot of spots, to find the fish, and get where you need to go as quickly as possible. Additionally, I'm going to show you all the rigs I'm using, the rods and reels, and the gear I'm using. And for the most part, the gear I'm using is really affordable entry-level catfishing gear. So let's talk about locating fish. If you're fishing a big river or lake like the Potomac, get yourself one of these maps. They're 10 bucks and they're worth their weight in gold. I'm fishing in the Tidal Basin. And the Tidal Basin is a lagoon on the Potomac. And it's pretty even and flat and not a lot of features in it. So this is how I pick where in the Tidal Basin to fish. I look for points of land. So if you have a place where the shore juts out, the fish, as they're patrolling along the shore, they get closer and they kind of choke up there. So no matter how far from the shore they normally like to patrol, when they hit a point, they kind of bunch up. So you want to fish that point and that'll concentrate the fish and increase your chances. This is a really good classic place to fish on big lakes or rivers. Additionally, um, the entrance points to these lagoons are great choke points. And on the tidal basin, there's two bridges that are the entrances and exits to this lagoon. Any fish that wants to come into the tidal basin, they have to go through these choke points. So the fish get concentrated. This is a great place to focus your fishing. So when you're trying to find where to fish, focus on choke points, points of land that jut out into the water, entrances and exits to lagoons, bridge abutments. These are all great classic spots. One of the keys to catching more fish is staying mobile, getting to try different spots, being able to get away from the parking lot and away from the areas that are fished the most is really important. And uh, this little cooler I've got is great for that. I built this thing myself. It's pretty cheap to make. Uh, you can see it's just a little rollaway cooler with some rod holders and a nice little swivel chair backrest. I bought this uh, three piece uh, rod holder off of amazon.com for like 19 bucks and just screwed it into the side. It holds my bait knife, which you may recognize from my magnet fishing video. I've got my needle nose pliers, and then it holds three rods very securely. So it's absolutely perfect for that. I also got this bass fishing chair um, that I had in my garage. I just mounted it on the top of the cooler, and it swivels around. It's got a nice little backrest. It's light, and it comes off, so it fits in my car easier. And it's just got this little base with... Uh, four screws and it is really secure. I'm actually really impressed at how stable it is and I'm 250 something pounds and it fits just fine with me. You can see here I just uh, replaced the screws with machine screws and a couple washers and I've just drilled through the cooler and bolted it in and it hasn't really affected the, uh, the effectiveness of the cooler that much. And inside the cooler you see I've got some frozen shad which I'm using for bait, I've got some water, I've got bite alarms and maps and gear and balloons and I've got GoPros and camera equipment and some tackle boxes so everything you need fits in the cooler nice. And on the top of the cooler I've glued these magnets in the cup holders. They're great so when you're tying rigs and you have hooks and you lift up the lid they don't fall out or if you're moving the cooler around they don't fall off. You also, it keeps your pliers secured or whatever that stuff. So it's just nice to have those on the top of the lid. But at any rate, I fished here for about 15 minutes and I've got a rule of thumb. If you don't get a bite within 15 minutes, move spots. This is true in the daytime when you're fishing in the day like I am or when you're fishing in the winter time. The fish don't move around as much in the daytime and in the winter time. So you've got to move around and find them. So I'll go to a spot, I'll fish for 15 minutes, I'll look at my phone. As soon as 15 minutes is up, I'm out of there. If I haven't caught a fish, I'm gone. So I'm just hitting spot to spot to spot. I'm hitting the bridges, the points, and just working my way around this, this uh, lagoon, hitting all the different locations. And if 15 minutes goes by with no fish, I'm out of there. Okay, let me show you a trick to transporting your rods. When you have your rods rigged up, these leads flop around and beat the crap out of your rods. So take the lead and wrap it once around the rod 
and then just pop it over the eyelet and boom, it's really secure and then your lead doesn't flop around and beat itself up and get tangled up in the other gear. Really simple and easy way, something to do when you're transporting your rods, either in the car or in this cooler. But at any rate, just keep moving, stay mobile. Don't sit and soak bait in the daytime or in the winter. At night, in the summertime, hey, find a spot, sit down, the fish come to you. But in the summertime, in the middle of the day, or in the wintertime, stay mobile. Go find the fish. Don't wait for them to come to you. At any rate, so let me show you the rigs I'm using. So like I said, I'm using some uh, frozen shad here, and I've got three different rigs on three different rods. This is called a high-low rig. I've also heard it called a pickerel rig. Um, it's a real popular in saltwater fishing, but it's this little bit of monofilament with two wire arms and a lead on the end. And the little wire arms, you attach a hook, you know, one hook each, and I've got a little bit of shad, and it uh, works really good. And here I've got a basic fish finder rig with two one ounce uh, egg sinkers, a swivel, and about 12 inches of line and a four aught uh, circle hook, um, real basic. And then this final rig I've got is kind of uh, a fun one. It's a balloon rig. You fish a balloon rig just like you would a bobber, except instead of using a bobber, you're using a little inflated water balloon. Blow up the balloon and use a simple overhand knot to connect the balloon to the main line and to tie off the balloon. The overhand knot will give it just enough friction to keep the balloon in place, but also allow you to adjust the depth of your rig. The advantages of the balloon is that it's highly visible, so you can see it at tremendous distances, but the balloon is also affected by wind and current more than other floats. And this is a good thing. What I'm doing is I'm casting with the wind. I'm letting the wind push my balloon out into the middle of the lagoon, and this allows me to slowly troll across the lake and cover a lot of ground and it allows me to fish at distances that are otherwise impossible to fish. I have over a hundred yards of line out and you can see my balloon is just a little speck in the distance. That's why it's important to have that big visible balloon so you can still see your balloon float way out at that distance. Alright, let me show you some really affordable catfishing rods and reels. I'm using the Daiwa Regal Bite and Run Reel. It's a 3500. It's about a $30, $40 reel you can get on Amazon.com. Then I've got the Shakespeare Contender, which is a rod and reel combo for about $30. Bucks. And I've got the Shakespeare Alpha Combo, which is also $30. Both the Contender and the Alpha are great beginner rods for medium and small catfish. I'm using electronic bite alarms, but little clip-on bells also work really good. I'll put a link to a video I did about a review of different bite alarms, but I need the bite alarms because I'm filming, and when I'm filming, I can't pay attention to my rods, and this happens, so it's kind of nice to have that. Right in the mouth, high low rig. Look at the gut on that. Well, this has been a really typical weekday session. I get up really early, I go out, I hit a spot, catch a fish, not I mean, a nice average blue cat, and uh, head off to work. It's a great way to spend a couple hours fishing before beginning a, another work day. It kind of breaks the week up a little bit. I hope you like this video and I hope you like our tips and learn something from it. At any rate, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, check out our other great videos, including my top eight catfish baits and a great bank fishing tips and tactics tutorial. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching.